sea level rise is at the interface between the land and the oceans. Now out in the oceans, the contribution of sea level rise is from two processes, a mass and a volume change. You warm ocean waters up from the increase in atmospheric temperatures and the oceans expand. The second aspect is mass. And if you increase our atmospheric temperatures, our ice sheets will melt and you'll get a change in mass from water in the solid form of ice through the hydrological cycle, making our way into the ocean basin. Sea levels are rising, and many coastal cities on the eastern shores of the United States are struggling to adjust to some of the fastest rates of increase in the world. For residents, especially those in low-income communities, regular flooding has become a major source of concern. I try to talk about flooding because climate change can be a very polarizing situation, but flooding is not uh, something that can be denied. There's no national plan for sea level rise, but some cities are more at risk than others. It is so hard to imagine parts of Miami Beach disappearing. We're living with the threat of sea level rise every single day. I was born here at Atlantic City Hospital. I've really noticed the flooding much more prevalent in the last 10 to 12 years. They were both playgrounds for celebrities, but Miami Beach and Atlantic City are two very different metropoles, both economically and demographically. They do have in common one thing, water is rising and fast. King tides are here and the rising floodwaters are creating some trouble for drivers and residents in some parts of South Florida. Salt water seeping up through storm drains and over the seawall soaking the streets of Miami Beach. The bad news, it's going to happen again tonight. Florida is extremely vulnerable to sea level rise because most of South Florida is right around four feet of elevation, so that any sea level rise, be that six inches or nine inches, really does tax our infrastructure here. Miami Beach lies on a thin coastal strip. Since the 1950s, some parts of Florida have experienced as much as 12 inches of sea level rise. An additional three to eight feet is expected in the next hundred years, but that depends on how quickly we can cut greenhouse gas emissions. The first thing that we need to do to counter this threat is stabilize the climate system. At two degrees or less of warming, that will make a big difference here in South Florida. We all are affected. Miami sits on limestone, so the water does not come from the shore. The water comes underneath us all also. So communities that don't sit on the beach are being affected by flooding. Sea level rise, sunny day flooding. Sunny day flooding is when the tides come up and the day is sunny like it is today and we have water in the streets. Local organizations have also emerged in response to the threat, mostly in hopes to inform and mobilize communities. Clio is one of them. Clio was formed as a nonprofit in 2010 to work with climate scientists to translate the seriousness of the data to a lay public. When Clio's outreach, which includes everyone from elected officials to grassroots communities, the biggest concern is sea level rise. Uh, this is an area down where they had flooding. This is 300 yards from the bay, and that's one of the main arteries, Ventnor Avenue. Virtually every single year, we have to replenish the beaches with sand because it's being continually eroded by the higher and higher sea levels. And then we can think, well, what about the future? Well, sea levels are not only going to rise, they're going to accelerate. Atlantic City is also at risk. The sea level here rises by 4 millimeters a year, 25% higher than the global average. When it floods, you can't get around the neighborhoods. Cars are lost all the time. Dunes are already in place on the ocean front to protect residents on the coast from king tides though the flooding is mostly a problem for residents on the bay side. We have seen an increase in nuisance flooding, and we are working on several projects to affect that, but flooding has a major impact on quality of life. Officials for both cities are investigating what they could do to keep the water out. City of Miami Beach has decided that we do not want to wait to see what the federal government does or the state government, so the city has basically taken it upon itself and has become somewhat of ground zero in terms of implementing measures that can help us get through the next several years. In Miami Beach, pump stations have been installed across the city to facilitate drainage of water after rainfall and high tides. 
Another solution has been to raise streets above sea level to avoid flooding. It's part of a massive $400 million effort to save Miami Beach, but this approach has been more difficult for local businesses and residents. The businesses in the area are now below street level. They've been rendered basements. We are now starting to move into residential neighborhoods and that's becoming a more sticky situation because residents do not want the streets raised higher than their homes. For many, the city has not been fair in delivering long-term solutions, a climate injustice many see as class-related. Liberty City, which is where we are right now, it sits in the same exact city as Miami Beach. However, we're considered low income, high crime, low education, and the city does not spend as much money on our community as they do in the communities like Miami Beach, which is unfair. So the inequity in Miami-Dade County, where more than 50% of our population is at or below the poverty level, means that they don't have a safety net. They are counting on the government to make sure that protections are in place in the worst case scenario. They don't feel that protection. I think that low-income communities in our country are usually left out, not included in different conversations, and it's the same here with the sea level rise and resiliency planning here in Miami. The Back Bay areas are generally the lower income areas of Atlantic City. So a lot of people that experienced the flooding were lower income. Atlantic City is trying to respond by raising homes in affected areas, but that might not be enough. You can continue to adapt, put sand on the beach, protect the shoreline. If the rates of sea level rise are not rapid, a choice needs to be made about whether we reduce our greenhouse gas emissions or whether we continue to emit greenhouse gases and then the sea level rise rates will be so fast that we won't be able to do anything about them. Coastal cities face an existential threat at a time when the U.S. is led by a president who dismisses the science of climate change. Donald Trump plans to cut funding for coastal resiliency and climate programs. Cities are increasingly finding themselves on their own. Anyone who understands the urgency of the climate data cannot, should not, and really have to be held accountable if they deny climate action in a really urgent way. We have to move away from oil and gas and, and burning fossil fuels, and we have to move to clean energy if we want to survive.